Okay, yeah, let's uh, pray and then we'll get started, right? Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to gather, Lord, to draw near to you, Master. We thank you for the promise that you will draw near and we will experience that. Lord, I pray that in our heart, in our minds, God, let there be a knowing. Father God, let there be a knowing even as you draw near to us. Lord, I pray that let there be an impartation, Lord, that comes from your heart to ours, Father God. Lord, I pray that uh, whatever you want to reveal, whatever you want to strengthen, whatever you want to remove and establish in our lives, Father God, um, we remain open, we remain surrendered. Lord, have your way, Master. Have your way with us. We thank you, even as we commit ourselves into your mighty hands. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so last class was about management. We're looking at management of various things, right? Uh, time, we looked at management of money, and we started with this um, uh, with the, another, another very important resource, which is uh, management of people, right? Uh, organizing, managing people. Okay. So, one thing I just wanted to share um, straight off is that, um, well, uh, while we are grouping, you know, management of money and management of people and all that, we are looking, studying that in, you know, one succession, uh, one thing after the other we need to understand that, um, well, people are not commodities. Okay? Right? People are not, because you know, if you're saying, that could be something that normally in the world or in organizations, you see that people are treated like commodities. Um, they are you know, esteemed for what they can bring in right? uh, into our lives or what they can contribute. And so, they are, you know, managed in that manner. How best, what best can I draw out uh, out of them? Uh, which is not a bad thing, right? It's good for a person also. But the thing is, we need to understand that people are human beings, right? Uh, they are esteemed greatly uh, in the eyes of our God, because John three sixteen talks about how He loved the world, uh, the people so much that He gave His only begotten Son to die for them that whoever believes should not perish right whoever believes should not perish so so sending that son to sacrifice was the greatest act of um, you know selflessness the greatest sacrificial thing that was done and it was done with people in mind right so ministry is with people in mind and right? whatever things that we do is with people in mind so uh, we need to put that in the right perspective. Right? Otherwise, we will look at people as a herd, you know, a nameless, faceless group that we need to manage. We need to somehow, you know, uh, get them to do certain things. Um, you know, we need to get certain things out of them and so on. So, um, so that is the right perspective. That is a heart. While we need to esteem people the way God esteems them, uh, and at the same time, be wise in managing, right? So, um, so let's look at uh, what is it that we need to see? What is it that we need to, uh, as a skill that we need to have established in our lives when it comes to managing people? Okay, So one thing that we need to understand is that ministry cannot be done in a vacuum. You know, Ministry is always for people. Uh, vacuum meaning ministry is not done in isolation, right? Um, so it is for people and it is also Many times it is with people, at least one other person, right? So it is with people. So uh, therefore, the ability to relate to, the ability to uh, kind of organize, um, get together, motivate, right, and go in the same direction, that falls upon every person who is going to be dealing with people, right? And it's only then that we realize that oh, oh there is a, you know there's a serious lack in skill or there's serious lack in ability that I need to really develop and um, and then you realize that especially when you're leading with people and and you cannot go there's only so much we can do with uh, with gut feel right so which means that uh, temperamentally this is how I am. You know, I have some certain abilities, and uh, and uh, you know, as we go along, we're just trying to see you know, 
okay maybe maybe this will work in the situation maybe this is how i need to deal with people yes you know there is only so much you can do there is only so much you can travel or so far you can travel now with that kind of a uh, mentality right so it's good to be skilled it's good to understand okay um, you know how does a team work it does that it's good to understand all these other aspects um, of organizing people delegation motivation etc when we are working with uh, others okay so the first part that we're going to look at is organizing okay so when it comes to organizing people what would help organize people what does it mean to organize to set an order right to arrange together for a particular purpose right um, we organize things for easy retrieval we organize things so that you know it can we can use it effectively we use that we do that you know a simple example would be a wardrobe you know we organize our clothes so that you know we can uh, we we can find it things better we can use it better we can uh, you know we can um, uh, we don't have to spend a lot of time on it right so we organize things we keep things in an organized manner it could be your laptop it could be your phone we put it in folders we pile them so that we can easily you know retrieve it we can access it we can also effectively use it right so so when it comes to people now how do you organize right how do you gather people how do you organize people maybe be it a church be it a ministry so the um, the main thing the important thing is to have a clear vision right vision we we looked at it in the christian leadership subject um because when there is a vision we can actually organize or arrange people around that vision right this is the most common thing that we can say okay this is where we as an organization this is where we as a team this is where we as a ministry as a church this is where we are heading so what happens everybody comes aligned either they come aligned with the vision or they step out either way there is some kind of a organizing that happens there's some kind of an arrangement that happens so so vision is a single most you know important thing for any group of people who are working together when it comes to managing people you know this vision uh clarity in vision and to have a common vision is very very important right so otherwise like we saw in uh christian leadership we see that people would pull in different directions right people in pull in different directions and you're not going you're not making any speed you're not making any uh progress okay i'm sure you've seen uh, if you've been to kerala you'd have seen the the boat race like snake race right so you see people who are rowing and the boats are literally flying right that's such great speed just imagine a scene when you know half of them are pulling in one direction rowing in one direction the other half is pulling in the other direction there'll be utter chaos right it's just going around and around it's not making progress it might capsize it might fall right now in a practical way we see that's the outcome so also when it comes to an organization so we need to have that in mind if there is you know people are not pulling in the same direction it's going to go around we're going to waste time and we are also going to have at at some point it will result in a casualty you know it will result in the whole thing collapsing it is very highly possible so efficient right so it's a description when we look at a vision it's a description what the church will do what the ministry will do or what it will become uh, in the future so three important questions you know what do you want to do that describes your vision why do you want to do it now that's a big thing you know why do i want to be you know as a church why do i function here as a church why do we function as a ministry right so have clarity and how do we go about doing it that describes our goals and objectives etc so the why part is the mission part mission you know how do we go about um the principles values uh, values etc right so a clear vision from god you know if it is in our hearts that provides the guidance that provides the clarity that provides the direction no matter what is happening around like things could be against us things could be you know things could be tough things could be difficult but still when the vision is there in our hearts we know that okay this is what god has given me 
he has given me because it's a possibility he has given me so that you know i can be that uh, i i can do that one day right it's going to take some time it be a process but you know he's given me that so uh, that clarity uh, that verse that we looked at uh, even this morning in the you know um, the mentoring our proverbs 29:18 where there is no revelation or where there is no vision the people cast off restraint but happy is he who keeps the law where there is no clarity of purpose um, so which means that where there is no vision there is no clarity people cast off restraints you know there is no boundary right there is nothing to hold people back they just do whatever they want to do but when there is a vision they know that okay here are some things that i should not do right there are some decisions or there are some you know places that i should not go here are some things that i i don't have to do this because i don't want to waste my time getting into these things this getting into these kind of areas so i'm saying okay this is what i'm supposed to do so let me go right let me go in that direction okay so a clear vision provides direction guidance a clear vision brings light meaning it means brings clarity um so we need to be able to state our vision we need to be able to you know communicate our vision reiterate our vision you know, these are things that we've already learned uh, stating meaning you need know, to be able to you know maybe write down a few lines uh, and that will always give us clarity right if you write down or if you you know maybe you know type it down that always gives us a uh, clarity you know it, clarity to ourselves right and that's why people also talk about journaling you write down okay what is god taught you what is god you when you you know what is god teaching you it's good to keep it in our minds it's good to keep it in our hearts but when you write it down when you see it then there's so much more clarity even as you write it down right so communicate your vision meaning share it with those who are part of it with a part of the work it could be a small team you know it could be a worship team it could be a you know a team that is um, you know outreach team communicate that vision you know this is what we are going to do in this particular time or in this particular event communicate it and we need to repeat it meaning people tend to forget so we need to repeat that vision right um a few thought on mission statement right mission statement is what do you do and for whom do we do it and how do we get it done right so that is a mission statement so um for example the mission statement of you know all people's church you know if you if you look at the vision it is to be the salt and light in the city of bangalore voice to the nation and to the nation so that is a that is a vision okay this is who we want to be and this is who we uh, this is the direction that we want to go but when you look at the mission statement okay this is what it looks like uh, that apc disciples and equip believers in the word and the spirit to mature them into Christ likeness and to fulfill God's purpose for their lives and to have influence and impact for God's kingdom so it's very tight you know it's closely tied to the vision right to be a person of influence to be a person of impact but how and how do we actually get that done in terms of discipling in terms of equipping the believer and right, in the word and in the work of the spirit to bring to a maturity to be christ like to fulfill god's purpose for their own lives and to have influence and impact for god's kingdom because influence and impact will be tied to the fulfilling of plan and purpose that that person has god has for that person right so this is um, very important the vision part of organizing uh, when it comes to organizing people organizing teams organizing you know maybe some teams could be very functional teams only you know it's a short term team a short term mission a short term assignment and that's it after that assignment the team is disbanded okay you're not going to meet together but even for such teams uh, given that short term or short duration of period even for them it is important to have the clarity in vision okay the greater the clarity and greater the um, agreement with the vision the action will be clear right if you are not clear in what we need to do uh, how to do it then our actions will not also be you know very fuzzy very unclear it's just you know practical wisdom right so so that's the uh, that's the thing first thing is the organizing bit second one it's again a little bit complex we see is this whole thing of delegating or delegation okay so what does that mean 
that means to you know maybe part of the responsibility of that you are carrying or maybe sometimes it's a whole different area of responsibility that you're carrying full responsibility of particular area that you're carrying to give it hand it over to another person right that is delegation you know i'm delegating this you know i'm i'm supposed to do this task this whole task of preparing food for this entire bible college maybe you know uh, preparing lunch for the entire bible college but i'm delegating this task to one person you, know, you take care of the rice or you take care of the meat you take care of the vegetables you know you do this you prepare this so i'm delegating that right so that it can be done because why do we do delegate because one person cannot do everything right one person cannot do everything one person cannot do everything effectively no matter how skilled they are right because there are limitations of strength there are limitations of time right so one person cannot fulfill everything um, so that's the thing so we delegate it so that there can be um, you know something that can be done effectively so we also delegate because you know in when you, when you look at ministry it is an opportunity for people to step in like when we delegate when we give responsibility to someone it's an opportunity for them right opportunity for them to to contribute it's an opportunity for them to step into god's call for their lives right we are creating that so delegation is not you know just you know there are certain tasks that you delegate and it's just a simple thing that needs to be done but when it comes to certain you know uh, it can even be very impactful life changing uh, just because somebody delegated a task to someone you know, we have stories of uh, people who are serving in church uh, like somebody asked them right hey, why don't you arrange chairs why don't you help in you know the sound and um, the setup team uh, why don't you help in ushering right so that person did not have any idea did not have any clue uh, and did not have any intention also right but they were just encouraged to and they were delegated that task but it changed their whole lives right it's like they became very uh, very involved they were they were faithful in what they were doing they were committed to what they were doing they were, they became good at what they were doing and they started serving and then they realized that hey uh, god has a call they even it led to the discovery of god's call and god's gifting in their lives and they realized that you know this is what god is putting in my heart you know he's drawing me to serve uh, in a church in a ministry and so on so um so we you never know right so we are providing opportunity we are actually encouraging people to step into you know the big picture that god has for them right so it's it's a giving of responsibility it's a transferring of responsibility so when when, when you look at uh, you know a ministry leader or a manager overseer um so delegation occurs when you assign specific tasks to your team member right you're giving them um you it, it's going to free up your time it's going to free up your you know your time to do other things so you're actually giving them that specific task so while we delegate while delegation is important it's necessary we need to understand certain things when it comes to delegation okay other because when we delegate it wrong then it can end up you know just bouncing back on us because ultimately who's responsible yeah you're responsible and nobody will ask the person you know you, you can give reasons you know and say you know that person did it wrong that person didn't do it didn't show up etc but then ultimately you know we are accountable as people who are leaders or managers or you know uh, people in ministry etc right so first thing you know um, know what is it that you're going to delegate right be clear okay? because what tasks of, of those 10 things that you need to do what is it that you specifically want to delegate okay, what is it that you do not want to delegate you do not want the person to do right you want to do it or you want someone else to do it so know what is it that you want to delegate and um so which means that you as a person who's delegating should have clarity in the tasks right okay this is what we are supposed to do so you need to have clarity meaning you need to be clear 
this is the quality of output this is the you know you know this is the time by which i need to get things done this is the standard all those things you know i need to be able to have i need to have clarity in the first place so that i can pass that on to the person to whom i'm giving the task right so if i want things done in a certain way if i want the chairs to be arranged in a certain way i'm just taking the chair example but you know i need to be very specific okay so many chairs i want it arranged i wanted to put it in a circle i wanted to put it in a you know with an aisle space space or i no aisle space whatever you know i need to have that clarity because i cannot tell the person you arrange the chairs whatever way you want right then you're going to be disappointed he or she will be disappointed because you gave me the freedom to arrange and i arranged it in whatever way you didn't tell me how you didn't tell me how many i just put a few chairs right so be specific uh, how you want it done and therefore you have clarity so that you can um, pass it on to that person right the second thing to think about is when it comes to delegation think about that person's strength or ability right and also uh, maybe it, it it could be even temperamentally how they are right for example when it comes to a church setting right maybe i want someone to you know meet with newcomers meet with new people talk to new people um etc so if you're going to delegate that you know, if you're going to hand over that task to someone what kind of person would you pick what kind of person would you pick you know you like newcomers new people are coming and you want that person to you know meet and talk to them and then get to know them tell them about church so what kind what call qualities would you look for in that person before assigning them okay uh, who can you can use the mic sir so who can um, oh, a person who can easily interact with people who loves to talk with mm. people meet okay not a shy kind of person mm. okay who can relate to people who doesn't mind having a conversation with people someone who's friendly right not someone who's going to be you know very angry looking intimidating you know because then the person will say why did i come here kind of thing so person who's friendly person who has got a warm smile maybe and um, one who can really talk to people it doesn't have to be someone who's very very extroverted doesn't have to be you know all the time talking no someone who can even ask questions right ask the right questions and listen to people right people you ask them about how they are doing and you know ask them some relevant questions and they they are talking and you need to be a good listener as well so it can be that right so the right person whereas if you pick a person who is more in, interested in machines more interested in technology more interested in ai i want to do this powerpoint i want to know the how to you know if you put such a person there then they're going to feel miserable you know they are not going to be they're not going to like it you know i i just want to be near the mixer i want to see how it go you know how to mix the sound and you know if you put a person of that temperament and also that ability then it's a mismatch so 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 when you're de delegating you know just find out what is the strength understand to whom you are delegating first the task itself you have a good understanding you have understanding of the person to whom you are understanding you know this can this person do it uh, is it their strength okay so yeah third one it would be to um, clearly define communicate the outcome okay what is the result that you want from the task that you're giving them right so we're not saying hey you take care of this you also tell them i want this task to be done we would like this task to be done in the next 5 to 6 hours and this is the quality with which we need it so you need to share them tell them that right um so the fourth one would be having told them okay this is how i would like it done this is when i would like this work to be done uh, completed we need to give them the resources right so they will ask okay i need this i need you know some tools to get it done i need some you know maybe ingredients to get it done i need to know the recipe you know can you help me right all those things so we need to give them the resources we need to give them the tools some of sometimes the resource or the tool could be a training that's it you know it could be a training okay uh, you know you you tell them they have a you know they have an ability to do maybe they have a keen ear for sound maybe for example you know they they know how to uh, you know do that they mix the sound uh, front of house whatever they can they have a keen ability to do that but 
that particular mixer is not what they are comfortable with, right? Maybe they are used to analog mixers, and you give them a digital mixer, and you're saying, you know, get this done. So there's nothing wrong. They have the you know temperament, they have the ability, but that particular tool, uh, they don't. They are not that particular equipment. They are not comfortable with. So in which case, they need to be trained. Right? They need to have the training in order to use it. They need to become comfortable using it. Once you do that, then you'll just they'll just take off. Right. So think about it. Okay, what tool can I give? What resource can I give? Do they need a phone? Do they need a laptop? Do they need a simple thing? Do they need pen and paper? What is it that they need? Right. Um, do they have the right resource for it? Right. Um, sometimes it's it's even you know financially they need uh, some you know some resource. Uh, you're asking them to come to a particular place at this particular time. You know the task would involve that, and they're saying. How can I come? I don't have that money to be there. So you need to think about it, right? And then resource them or train them um, to do that, right? Sometimes the tool is also the authority. Okay, so you are authorized to uh, carry it out. You're authorized to talk to such and such a person and uh, you know to ask such and such a person to get the job done. Right, so you're you're authorizing the person. Let's say, for example, if you appoint someone as a service coordinator, like right, for a church service, and that coordinator has to interact with all the teams, make sure that the church service uh, gets done effectively. You know, whatever is done, right from the you know before the service starts till after the service is done, you know, all the things that go into a let's say an urban church kind of a setting. So you're appointing a service coordinator. Now the service coordinator has to be given the authority to ask the ushering team leader to interact with the the worship team head to make sure that the sound team head, you know, uh, so that they should be given the authority to ask questions. Hey, are these things ready? So because the other team should not say like, hey, who who ask you know, who are you to tell me? Who are you to ask me? Who are you to direct me that I should, you know, maybe there's a delay. So this person should have the authority, should be given the delegated authority to ask, to be hold people accountable. So think about that also. You know, uh, can this person do that? So how, what do I need to do in order to give them the authority, right? Establish a clear communication channel. So which means that, um, you know, how can that person talk to you how can that person clarify their doubts? How can that person learn? You know, so you need to have a clear channel, meaning a clear pathway of communication. You can tell them, you know, you can call me at any time. Or you should tell them, you please call me at this time. Right? Give me a, let's meet every week on this particular day. Because you could be a busy person, right? You don't want, you know, people calling you and reporting and saying, you know, uh, you know, I did this, I did that, I need this, I need that. So you give them, you know, maybe email is the best way to contact me or text me or call me, whatever. Establish a clear pathway for them to communicate and for you to communicate to them. Okay. So we are all this comes under uh, delegation, right? Um, also, uh, the sixth point is that you give them some space for them to you know it seems almost paradoxical but you give them the space for them to fail okay which means that initial steps you know maybe it's a non critical thing you know something that is non critical meaning just because they don't do it or just because they fail doesn't mean that the entire organization is going to stop or that entire program is going to be a failure, right? So it could be a non-critical task. So you give them that space to fail, you know, because suppose they fail, let there be a backup, right? So you allow them. So which means that they can experiment, they can innovate, they can try out things, and they come to this thing that okay, this works, this does not. Okay. Like for example, when we uh, I'm just thinking about the worship team and how. Um, you know, when we uh, uh, ask that person to co-lead, 
with another person. Now, sometimes what happens, people get nervous and they've always led in a small setting and maybe they, it's a big setting and they, they are nervous and they, they wanted to say certain things and lead in a certain way, but now they've shut off. You know, they don't, they've even forgotten the song. <laughs> you know, they've completely, they, they're just freezing, right? So what happens is there is always a backup. They are co-leading. They're leading with someone who's experienced. They're leading with someone who is a little more, you know, who's stronger, right? So they can always fall back. So that person always says, hey, I got you. I got your back and I will step in, right? Uh, every time I, anytime I notice that you're struggling, I'll just step in. So uh, give them that space. So, so you they can correct, right? So uh, we need to be patient. That's the next thing. We need to be patient. We need to give them a time. Um, you know, you yourself may be highly skilled, right? Maybe you can do the job in ten minutes, but they are they taking the same task for the same task. They are taking maybe. 20 minutes, double the time, maybe three three times that time, you know, 30 minutes. Um, that is bound to happen. Okay, so don't rush in and say, okay, I'll only do it. Like sometimes we do that. No, you give the task, say, oh, hey, leave it, yeah, I'll only do it. And then you go finish it. And that's ineffective delegation, right? Because again, it's taking your time. Right. So maybe initially that so you factor in, oh, this person is going to take 30 minutes, what I did in 10 minutes, but it's fine. Right. I want that done so that the next time they maybe they'll do it in 20 minutes. The next time they, they could even do it faster than I did. Right? Maybe they'll do it in five minutes. Who knows? So um, so that can also happen. So be patient. Right? You tell yourself, I'm going to be patient. Right? This thing is very important. Where the eighth one, where we give feedback and we also receive feedback. Right? So this whole feedback thing is not to point out always point out problems, right? It's not always negative. So feedback is a good thing. Right? So as long as it's received well, as long as it's communicated well, right? So suppose I, I give you feedback and I say, hey, you know, you, this, this certain thing, these things are, are done well, superb, but there are some things that, that could have been done, done better. And maybe you next time you do it, you try it this way, right? Um, you know, this thing was way off. You should not even attempt. So that feedback is valuable, yes or no? It's very valuable, right? Otherwise, I will keep doing it the way I did it with a lot of mistakes. Maybe I didn't even, you know, I, there's no scope for correction. Uh, I didn't even realize that what I was doing was wrong, right? So feedback is always good. I think I shared about that person who came after a service and told me, uh, Pastor, your content is good, but your your voice voice modulation is putting me to sleep <laughs> right that is what he said so i was really grateful for that feedback because he uh, you know he was really bold enough to do that it was immediately after the service okay he just came and he felt bad after saying this he felt no i'm, I'm really sorry maybe i should not have said that and you know man of god and all those kind of things so why how can i talk to this man of god but but the thing is i'm glad that he you know said that so then i can you know, I can ask myself, okay, I have this tendency, do this, therefore I should watch out. And I should, I, I have this thing which is a weakness, but I need to turn it into something that's effective. So consciously I can think about it right, and act on it. Right? So feedback is good. Right? So feedback should come as something that is constructive. So if you are giving feedback, give it as something that's constructive, meaning something that builds up. Okay, not as something that is a criticism. Okay, okay. so what is a, you know, we can say, okay, it is a, a constructive feedback or we can say constructive, um, you know, even criticism, but it, it cannot be a negative criticism of, um, of the person, right? And also when you're giving feedback, it's good to separate the person from the role or the task. Okay, so how do we do that? Any thoughts? Separate the person from the task. Anyone online? Is it, imp it, is it important to do that in the first place? Yeah. Because, you know, when you are 
attributing whatever they have done and you're saying okay this is who you are as a person now that's a you know that's a negative thing right you're saying maybe they didn't do it well maybe they didn't maybe they were supposed to cook a particular thing they didn't add salt or they add too much salt <laughs> okay <laughs> so you when you say you know you are a terrible cook or you know you really messed up this time okay what are we doing you're putting the blame on blame on him see the reality he is to be blamed he or she is to be blamed so that's it. yeah so raising more of that person more than what is hmm so the focus the whole focus is on that person who they are as an individual rather than what they did like what they did and who they are if we are able to you know separate it and say okay see this is i know this is what you did you know you this thing came out like this uh, this is a total disaster <laughs> right uh, and it can be avoided it can be changed and you know we can do that so well we are human we are angry we are angry that it it turned out this way but even in our you know we are in our anger in our disappointment we need to be careful not to pass that on not to react in anger and say those things which are going to take a long time to again you know heal and work together and bring in reconciliation and all that right we say it in an instant but it's going to take some time right? so we need to remember that to separate what that person did and who they are as a person right and it works in all relationships right friendships and you know formal professional relationships marriage whatever um the same you know when you say you know you are always like this you are you always do this you always complain then you know it it breaks down the relationship right okay so given receive feedback feedback is very important um even uh, like from a person to whom we have delegated we are getting some very valuable feedback right uh, we are they giving because they are the one who actually did the task so they giving some information about this is how people are feeling this is how you know this is how um, you know yeah, so this is how things went and this is how people feel this is what is working this is what is not working so it's a very important information that you're receiving as a leader as a pastor as a ministry leader whatever so that information is valuable that you're getting so you can actually make some decisions based on it you can pray over that and make some changes which are beneficial you know for the team for the organization so value that value feedback um when it comes and right? sometimes it might come as criticism but even then you know just value it if there's any truth to it work on it right well the the other one that we see the last one is to give credit which meaning which means that you appreciate right acknowledge the work appreciate recognize the good thing that they have done right it's not to flatter people be sincere be honest in our appreciation you don't have to like press the person you know to some put some but oh this is a wonderful too good be honest <laughs> because the person can also you know everyone knows uh, you know uh, everyone can sense if it's not honest if it's not sincere so be honest right um so do that give credit for the work that they've done don't take that credit to yourself you know you delegated it they did it you know sometimes we hear right when it comes to phd work research work the professor will would have you know uh, the professor is a person uh, to whom that person you know the research person is supposed to you know get guidance from and they take the research work put their own name and publish it because it's a great thing you know. and uh, recently i uh, one in one from our own organization this person is a is a vice president in you know, that organization and he heads a dip, uh, uh, a function which is innovation creativity and new products new so so he has like so many products these are tech products and services he has patented right so it's a i won't name the company but it's a top you know uh, it firm uh he left the company but he said this is what his managers right his superiors would do that he would spend hours 
uh, inventing, discovering, and you know, coming up with a new product which would save the company a lot of money, which would which would actually you know be a success in the marketplace. But they would take it and not even mention his name. Right? They would say, "Okay, this is what I did." Right? So um, they would not even mention his name or his team, whatever. They would take the credit themselves. So it resulted in him getting very discouraged and you know and finally just left the organization but so the thing is this you know when we give credit where it is due We're honest you know okay this is what that person did and we thank that person for their contribution and so on right? being sincere honest that helps so um, so we'll be looking at this whole thing of delegation so delegation is not easy delegation can be frustrating okay so we need to understand that but when it works when we get into the habit of delegating successfully and uh, when it really works well and when you also are skilled in delegating it then it's then it's such a joy right because there's a lot of things that get done there are a lot of things that get done well and you are not frustrated all the time right because of lack of time you know you know you're not running here and there and everywhere you know, because of this huge project, you know, you're able to effectively do it. And there's so much of contentment. Right? This, it's so fulfilling. And, and the others also who are actually carrying out those tasks uh, to whom you are delegating those tasks, they are also feeling fulfilled. They are also feeling accomplished because they have done something, something that's useful, something that's productive. So they are also you know, um, uh, you know, they're experiencing that fulfillment and contentment, and you know, especially when you look at the ministry kind of a thing, you're seeing that they are also stepping into the call that God has for them. Just, just think about Timothy, um, people like Timothy and Titus, and you know, Paul says to Timothy, you know, he says, "I left left you in Ephesus," or to Titus, he says, "I left you in Crete uh, to do this," you know, to to fill in that gap. To fulfill what was lacking there so it was a delegation it was a ministry delegation but we see that you know timothy has grown from that place of being a you know young man whom he picked up from derby lystra he's grown to be a person who's handling that church the responsibility of a church which has older people people who are older than him uh, and there are challenges that are very complex but He's overseeing that, right? He's stepping into the call that God has, how God had dreamed for him. He's stepping into that. So, you know, delegation happens. That uh, delegation can actually push people in that direction, bring people uh, to that fulfillment, right? Any questions here uh, on delegation uh, and even on vision? Yeah. Nothing. Any thoughts? Any stories of wrong delegation? <laughs> delegation going wrong. <laughs> I think you have a lot of experience. Short term Bible college. You guys were here, and <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. So we'll just um, uh, like move to the next uh, next uh, topic in the same same thing about people man. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, uh, Michael. Sure. About yeah. uh, organizing people. Yeah. So when we organize people, sometimes for so many like areas, so sometimes thinking is not going according to us, or else maybe people is not listening, maybe mm. whatever is that. So we are facing this kind of situation. So that time we thought we think like, oh, we should stop everything mm. and we leave everything. So how to handle this kind of situation when we are organizing? Hmm. Whatever is that. So uh, it's about delegation or organizing people for a particular thing. So uh, you share the vision. People are initially maybe very enthusiastic, but then suddenly you realize that things are not going in the same direction. Maybe people have differing vision. Okay. So the thing is to uh, find out why. You know, sometimes what happens is it's a it's a question of attitude, right? Maybe people have the capability, but then. For some reason, uh, you know, they're not able to apply, uh, meaning they're not able to give their 100%. Okay. So we can find out why. You know, maybe they're going through a personal struggle. Maybe they're going through uh, something 
uh, some challenges they are discouraged uh, so it could be something like that or it could be something to do with their ability so first one is attitude the other one is skill or ability you know they are, they are genuinely they f- they are unable to because they are not trained they are not resourced you know so we can these are two ma- main checks we can find out you know why is it and the best thing is to talk to the person understand look at the quality of work that's coming out and see why is this why is it like this initially they were full josh when they started off that but then somewhere that fire is not there so what is taking out that fire is it their personal lifestyle some of the things that they are indulging in we need to you know ask some honest questions um, and then we'll be able to align right um, align them to the vision so that could so that would be a good thing you know they are again back and again you know uh, going full on but what if they are not coming aligned so that's also a reality they're saying okay i think i cannot do this i think i i'm not interested anymore i seem to have lost the passion for this or i i feel that god is calling me for something else right it's best to let them go and it's best to let them go honorably and say okay maybe you feel that something else is you know taken uh, importance you know your priority over this and uh, being here you're going to be frustrated and being here is not helping um, the vision as well so what would you like to do you know are there options that you are considering and it's better to release them into that right where they will be more fulfilled where they will be productive um where they can be a blessing yeah yeah okay so we'll stop here and then continue um next class with um uh, further with this topic right Thank you. God bless.